Hi everyone, welcome to Chill Physio channel. In this video, I'll talk about plantar fasciitis and what is the assessment criteria for plantar fasciitis and the best exercises for plantar fasciitis. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe our channel for future videos. So let's get started. Fasciitis may be referred to as plantar fasciosis or plantar heel pain or plantar fibromatosis and among others. And the main reason for plantar fasciitis is, is multiple causes. It is not only a single directional cause, it is a multi-directional cause or multiple. There are many different sources of uh, pain in the plantar uh, heel besides plantar fascia and therefore plantar heel pain is the best suitable term to be used for plantar fasciitis because there are multiple causes for this particular condition. That is, I would like to give you an introduction to windlass mechanism because this is one particular mechanism where your whole segments of the foot will act as one single unit. So plantar fascia as such will originate from your posterior aspect of the calcaneal region and it comes till your grid toe or your near the sesamoid bow region. So now what happens is when you tend to extend your great toe, you can look at this video, extension of great toe will bring the whole plantar fascia together. It will become rigid, it will act as one single unit and this is the region where your whole foot or particularly toe region weight bearing is possible. Because plantar fascia will become so rigid, it tends to bring all the structures together as one single unit. This is called as windlass mechanism. And in this windlass mechanism, the whole foot will become a weight bearing aspect irrespective of multiple segments. And if windlass mechanism fail, the whole plantar aspect of the foot tends to lose its arch because of overstretching of your plantar fascia or it tends to act as a different segment and it allows the person not to have a proper weight bearing aspect of the toe region or the foot region. So there are multiple risk factors that may cause uh, people to have plantar fasciitis. One is reduction range of motion or reduced range of motion in ankle mortis, particularly your terrapural segment or uh, subtalar segment. And the second aspect is going to be pes cavus or plus panis deformities of foot. And third one is excessive pronation of foot and this happens in dynamical aspect or dynamic uh, mobility of your foot. So when we tend to walk, what happens during this is the foot is going to take all the force, it acts as shock absorber and it disperses the whole weight from posterior to anterior segments or anterior aspect of the foot. So now when there is an excessive pronation of foot that happens during gait, normal gait, either it could be a slow pace walking or it could be a rapid fast walking. During this particular aspect, the foot becomes immobile or foot becomes hypermobile in the segments and ultimately causing excessive stretch of the plantar fascia and cause pain such as running, jumping or standing activities and improper shoe fit. People who have improper shoe fit may also have plantar fascia because of reduced mobility in the whole foot region and overweight people. If the BMI is higher, people tend to have lot of foot weight happening because of the load coming from H that is head, arm and trunk. H A T. So all these three aspects is going to weight bear completely on the foot region ultimately causing pain. And people who tend to have diabetes or hypertension may also prone to get plantar fasciitis and that could be a comorbid conditions where they may end up in plantar facial pain. Presentation of plantar fasciitis is heel pains early in the morning. As soon as you weight bear early in the morning in the initial few steps, people tend to have or people tend to experience lot of pain in the plantar aspect of foot. This is one clinical uh, presentation that you can observe and other vice versa which you can see is after a prolonged non weight bearing activity such as sitting or lying down on sofa for a long duration of time and as soon as you weight bear you may experience pain in the plantar aspect of foot. So this is a clinical or typical clinical uh, presentation which you can see in plantar facet. So the first clinical presentation is pain over the heel region during weight bearing aspect. For example, early morning pain and initial steps would be very painful and this is one clinical presentation which you can see in plantar fasciitis. And the second clinical presentation is non weight bearing position for a prolonged period of time. For example, if you are sitting and watching TV for a long duration of time and as soon as immediately weight bear, you may experience severe pain in the calcaneal region or the heel region. So this is the other clinical presentation which you can observe during plantar fasciitis. And third clinical presentation you are going to observe is loss of dorsiflexion range means your talocrural segment is not going to have a proper range and the mobility is going to be reduced and this is one clinical uh, sign which you can observe in plantar fasciitis or people may experience tightness in the calf region or tightness in the tendo Achilles tendon region so this is another clinical presentation which you are going to experience and to best example of this is 
when you tend to squat you may experience tightness over the tender occlusal region and tightness over your calf region so these are the clinical presentations which you are going to observe in plantar fasciitis and the other presentations are going to be pain during climbing stairs weight bearing aspect during climbing up and climbing down is going to be painful and this is another clinical presentation which you can observe fasciitis of all the outcome measures used in plantar fasciitis nothing but foot posture index or fam fadi all these outcome measures are going to be a self reported or patient reported outcome measures of all these outcome measures fam foot and ankle ability measure is found to be reliable for plantar fasciitis so this is one particular outcome measure which you can use in people with plantar fasciitis so this has functional outcomes in this particular scale where you can see which activity is going to get impaired because of this plantar fasciitis so you can use this particular uh, outcome measure to scale or to report what is the functional level of people with plantar fasciitis this is ankle mobility exercise this has to be performed for three sets and 10 repetitions gradually lean forward and extend and dorsiflex this is great toe extension you have to keep a small roll in front of your great toe and gradually extend it so this stretches the whole plantar fascia great toe extension in standing gradually push your weight upward and such that the whole load comes on your toe great toe extension in standing without any support so gradually stand and come on to your toes and this exercise has to be performed for three sets into 15 repetitions and the exercise has to be done gradually not fast in order to improve ankle mobility this is one of the stretches nothing but wall forwards so you have to gradually lean against a wall using your knee bends plantar fascia stretches can be done using a foam roll or a small tennis ball gradually place the tennis ball under your plantar aspect of the foot and gradually low forward and backward intrinsic foot muscle strengthening is a main component of rehabilitation gradually bring your toes and curl your toes gradually for three sets in 10 repetitions so this exercise can be performed with a theraband gradually place the theraband as shown in the video and do intrinsic toe curls these are calf stretches to improve the mobility of ankle this is complete calf stretch both your gastrosoleus is going to stretch in this particular aspect so only soleus stretch gradually bend your knee and put your or shift your weight backward such that you feel a complete soleus stretch in the lower half of the calf so this is posteriorly posterior activation this can be done with a gentle activation by being posteriorly posterior activation can be done using a theraband it can be done two ways one in standing as shown in the video other one is in sitting so this is tibialis posterior activation in sitting you have to place theraband in 45 degree angulation and gradually come into and inward if you like this video please like and share with your friends and subscribe to our channel